So if you've been keeping up with your Batman mythology, you'd know that the Dark Knight has been without his trusty partner Robin since February 2013. This is because in Batman Incorporated number 8, writer Grant Morrison killed off his own creation, Damian Wayne, who was the biological son of Bruce Wayne and the then-current Robin. Since then, the comic Batman and Robin has seen a slew of guest stars, with the title changing according to who Batman's teaming up with that issue to help him deal with the loss of his partner and son. This has all been leading up to the current storyline, Robin Rises, which promises to give Batman a Robin once again. Now, I haven't been reading Robin Rises, but from everything I've gathered, it seems like they're trying to bring Damien back and have him reclaim the role of Robin. Let me tell you why I hate that and why Tim Drake deserves it more. Okay, real quick, a brief history of all the Robins just so that you're caught up. Start the clock. Robin 1, Dick Grayson. He's probably the one you all know. He's the acrobat who saw his parents murdered in front of him at a very young age, just like Batman. Now he's currently Nightwing, which I did an episode on before we got our lighting rigs. And currently he is a covert spy working for Spiral because comics. Robin 2, Jason Todd, a street kid who Batman takes in and tries to give guidance to. But Jason's kind of a prick and eventually gets killed by the Joker. And technically the fans. He came back from the dead and became the Red Hood, which should have been DC's answer to the Punisher. But he's just been kind of there, I guess. Robin 3, Tim Drake. Figured out Batman's secret identity at a young age and proved to him why he needs a Robin in his life. He's currently under the title Red Robin because he wants to distance himself from the Bat family, but not totally. I'll see if I can explain that in a minute. Robin 4, Stephanie Brown. She was only Robin for a couple of months and Tim Drake eventually came back to the role anyway. And DC kind of just likes to brush this under the carpet, even though I have the comics where she was Robin. So, whatever. Not really important, but I feel like people should know about this character's time as the Boy Wonder. Or Girl Wonder, I guess. And finally, Robin 5, Damian Wayne, Bruce Wayne's biological son with Talia al Ghul, aka Miranda Tate from The Dark Knight Rises. Up until the age of 10, Damian was trained by Talia and the League of Assassins to be a martial arts master and to eventually succeed Ra's al Ghul in leading the League of Assassins. And he wasn't the most well liked character in the very beginning. Jason Todd may have been a prick. But Damien made Jason look like a saint. He was arrogant, rude, spoiled brat, and perhaps most importantly, homicidal. He had no problem killing his enemies, and this included other Robins. He once beat Tim Drake within an inch of his life because as the true son of Bruce Wayne, he felt that he was the only one who deserved the mantle of Robin. After Bruce Wayne died and Dick Grayson took over the mantle of Batman, he anointed Damien Robin because he felt that Tim Drake was not a student but an equal to him, and that there was a lot he could teach Damien. After Bruce came back, Damien stayed in the role and served as Robin up until last year, when he died. Now, in all fairness to the character and his creators, especially the work of Peter Tomasi, Damien has become a much different character than he originally was back in 2006. He'd become much less brutal and a lot more sympathetic. It was actually really emotional when he died. He died a hero. But all that said, and I know people think he's the best Robin, but honestly, I feel like he's the worst. Well, second worst. While he became less violent and narcissistic, he never stopped being violent and narcissistic. Even towards people of the Bat family, including Batman. He was constantly acting out against authority figures and people above him, always feeling like he knew what was best when he clearly didn't at times. Perhaps my biggest problem with the character is his flippant attitude towards killing people. I'm not against comic book characters killing their villains, but in the case of Batman I am, because his whole character is built around that one rule. We've all seen The Dark Knight, we know what that rule is. Damien has no problem breaking it, even after repeated warnings. In the first arc of the new 52 Batman and Robin series, Damien just kills the villain nobody, and Batman doesn't do anything. He doesn't even punish him. He doesn't even tell Dick and Tim that it happened. He just lets it happen. Damien never seemed like a character who deserved the role of Robin, even though he tried. He just didn't have what it takes to be the sidekick of the Batman. Now, I'm not saying a good sidekick should be obedient at all times, but Robin is supposed to be a compliment to Batman. A light check to his darkness, someone who keeps his moral compass in order, not questioning it at every turn. Which is one of the reasons why Tim Drake should be Robin again. That was the whole point of his creation. He was specifically designed to show people what Robin means and why Batman keeps him around. And it was created at a time when anti-Robin sentiment was at an all-time high. And he did it by being the first Robin to truly earn the role. He wasn't born into tragedy like Dick and Jason were. He was an average kid who wanted to be Batman's partner. And he proved that he's worthy of not just wearing the costume, but also fighting in a war on crime. And while he was proving it to Batman, he was proving it to us, the readers, as well. Here was a character that had what it took to fight alongside the world's greatest detective. He wasn't afraid to challenge Batman if he felt he was wrong, either. 
He was a character who knew what it meant to be Robin and took that responsibility very seriously. When Bruce Wayne died, he was the only character who thought that he was still alive. That combined with Damien becoming Robin forced Tim to become Red Robin, which distanced himself from the Bat family and continued his quest to find Bruce Wayne. For 20 years, he was the definitive comic book Robin, and his popularity even went beyond the world of comics. You look at a character like Kyle Rayner, who was only Green Lantern for less than 10 years before they brought Hal Jordan back, and Tim Drake was Robin throughout all of that, and never once did anybody say, you know, Dick should be Robin again. Tim Drake has appeared in Batman the Animated Series, Young Justice, Arkham City, DC Universe Online. He's going to appear in the upcoming Infinite Crisis game. He has had action figures and Legos made out of him. There have been articles about how and why Tim Drake is so popular. And every time they do a fan poll of the greatest Robins, it's always neck and neck between him and Dick Grayson, with Tim often on top. Bottom line is, Tim Drake is Robin. He may be more Robin than anyone else who's ever had that mantle, no matter how much DC is trying to deny it right now. I know Damian Wayne is a popular character, but he's not right for the role. Ben Riley was a popular character, and they didn't keep him as Spider-Man. I'm not saying don't bring Damian back, but if you do, don't make him Robin. Make him like a villain or an anti-hero. Something that is more close to what his personality is. So, please, DC, if you're watching this, which I'm pretty sure you are, make Tim Drake Robin again. He is the definitive Robin for not just this generation, but all generations. And it would be a shame to let him go to waste, especially now during the 75th anniversary of Batman. And with the upcoming Infinite Crisis and probably an appearance in Arkham Knight, you're going to want to capitalize on that. So please, just put Tim Drake where he belongs. What do you guys think? Who do you think should take up the role of Robin? Don't say Carrie Kelly or John Blake. They don't count. At all. Let me know down below or on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with your friends. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Overcollecting is, simply put, collecting more than you have the necessary room for. It can be in regards to anything. Comic books, a video game collection, statuettes, action figures, DVDs and Blu-rays, anything. Now, are they adding anything to this? They are... To the Resident Evil? They're, make, they're giving it a 16x9 display support. Alright. Um, well. new, <laughs> a new control scheme in addition to the original control scheme. That's a big deal! That's <laughs> Why a big is that deal. a big deal? Because the original Resident Evil control scheme is terrible.